Hey, what's up everyone? Welcome back to your SQL Server tutorial series. Now, I'm gonna keep this one short, cause I gotta go eat some grilled cheese. But let's get started. The very first term that I'm going to introduce to you in this video is foreign key. Now, a column inside of a table can be labeled as a foreign key. And when you do that, you're telling the database that every single row for this column has to have a value that is in a different column. It's much easier to visualize, so let's draw that out. Here we have two tables, and let's say we label this column as a foreign key, and we say that it references this column. That means every single row inside of this table has to be a value inside of this column. So for example, let's say this is 8, 12, 10, and 11. The accepted values here would be any of these, but 13 would not work because it's not in this table's column. The reason we create foreign keys is to create relationships in our database. Relationships are when two tables are connected somehow using a foreign key. Now, almost always, a foreign key is going to reference a primary key. So in this situation, this would be the PK, this would be the FK, primary key, foreign key, and the foreign key references in the primary key. Now both the primary key and the foreign key are known as constraints. A constraint is something that prevents certain data. In this situation we are preventing the value 13 because it's not a value in the parent table. That is a perfect example of a constraint. Now constraints are a very important thing when it comes to protecting our data integrity. Now there are numerous constraints. Primary and foreign keys are just examples, but there's some other options that you can use. We will be getting into all of the constraints in upcoming videos. Now when you create a primary key, it's automatically indexed. When a column is indexed, we can select data and use that column much faster. Literally just think of like an index in a book, it helps you find information much faster. Primary keys are automatically indexed, Foreign keys, on the other hand, are not automatically indexed. We'll often be using foreign keys and primary keys together, so it's usually beneficial to manually give the foreign key an index. And we'll get into the details of indexes too in future videos. But this is kind of like a video just to kind of give you a feel of everything that's going to be coming. That way when it comes, it's not, BAM, here's a bunch of new information. Yeah. Another thing regarding foreign keys is that when you're referencing another column, both of the columns have to have the same data type. Put simply, a data type is just the type of data. There are a couple different categories. We have numeric data, that would be a number. We have string data, then we have what some people call temporal data, and that's just dates and times. Then there's a couple of other data types that don't really fit into these categories. A data type is used to tell the database how to work with our data. So, this is completely different than this. In this situation, this is numeric data, and this is string data. String data is essentially data that is enclosed in quotes, and is just a sequence of characters. So a number is an example of a character. So a string is alphanumeric, and that means alpha as an alphabet, and numeric as in numbers. But they don't work like numbers. When you store this as a string, you're not planning on doing math with these numbers. This is a number in the database, therefore you can do math stuff with it. <laughs> math stuff. Temporal, those are dates, and we'll get into all of those details later. But just so you guys have a rough overview, there's three main categories. Numeric, string, and temporal. Memorize those. Now when you're talking about database constraints, you don't usually mean data types because that's kind of like a separate topic, but you can kind of think of them as constraints. Because if you labeled a column one of the numeric data types, and you tried to put something in like pi, that's going to be rejected. So a data type is another way to protect our data integrity. And you can see all of this comes back to data integrity. The most important thing in your database is data integrity. Because of that, the upcoming videos are going to discuss data integrity, database design, relationships, normalization, all of that good stuff. 
Check out the next videos. If you've enjoyed these, if you've been learning, please click subscribe. It really helps my channel and it means a lot to me too. Uh, be sure to click like and I will see you in the next video.